Hey, welcome back to the next lesson of how to use the cross-platform native plugins 2 inside Unity. For this lesson, I'll show you how to use the network service. Now once again, please check out Voxel Busters, who are the developers of this package and the official sponsors of this series. Now the networking service of the cross-platform native plugin is used for one purpose, and that is to see if the user's device has access to the internet or specific servers. The use cases section of the documentation talks about how you can block the user from accessing specific parts of your game if they don't have an internet connection. For the setup, all you have to do is enable networking services in the Essential Kit settings. So inside Unity, I'll open up our Essential Kit settings, and then I'll enable the networking services, after which we can expand this service. And here we have IPv4 and IPv6 options for entering in a specific address that we want to see if we can reach. There's then a toggle for Auto Start Notifier and Ping settings, which I'm going to leave as default. In the usage section of the documentation, it talks about the code that we can use to implement the networking service into our game. For this, we'll need to create a new C-sharp script. And so here I have a new script, which I've called IG underscore networking services. And once you've created the script, we can open it up. Inside the script, the first thing that we need to do is add the using boxbuster.essentialkit namespace, after which we can create four variables. The first, like in all these videos, is a singleton of this script. And so I have public static IG networking services. And I've called this variable instance. And then we have three public bools. The first is called is internet active. The next is is host reachable. And the last is is notifier active. Now, once you have these variables created, we want to initialize our singleton. And we'll do that within the start function. And so I have instance equals this. This will make it so that we can access any public method or variable in the script from anywhere in our project. From here, we can jump back to the documentation and we'll copy this segment of code which contains an onenable and onDisable function. We can then paste these into our script and you might recognize that within our onenable function, there are two events that we are registering functions to. One is called onhost reachability change and the other is on internet connectivity change. And at this point, you're probably receiving errors for the two functions that we're registering to these events. And that's because we need to create those functions. And so we'll jump back to the documentation. And in the next section of code, you can see those two functions being created. And so we'll copy this section of code and we'll paste them in below our start function. Now there's a note in the documentation that says we can either listen to the general internet connectivity or to a specific host. But if we're listening to a specific host, then we need to set that host address in the essential kit settings as we've already talked about. Next, we have the section on starting to detect the status and we have the start notifier function. And so I'm gonna copy this line of code and in our script, I've created a public void function called check network and I've pasted this line of code inside. Now you'll be able to call this function from anywhere in your script using this example code but by calling the start notifier function, our two events, which we are registering to in the on enable function, will begin to trigger. And when these events are triggered, our two registered functions will be called. And it's inside these functions that we want to update our bool variables. And so under the checking status anytime section, there's a line of code for updating the is internet active variable, the is host reachable variable, and the is notifier active variable. And so I'm gonna copy the first line of code and I've added it to our on internet connectivity change function. We can then copy the second line of code and I've added it to our on host reachability change function. You can also delete the bool type before these lines of code because we've added these as variables up the top. And then once again, after updating these variables, you can access these variables from anywhere in your project using the singleton of the script because these are public variables. Now in the last part of this documentation, there's another note that talks about how if you're not going to be checking the status of your network for a period of time, then you can stop the notifier. And so we'll copy this line of code under stop detecting the status. And here I've created another public void function called stop status. And I've pasted this line of code inside this function. Once you have the script, we'll go ahead and save it and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, all we need to do is create a prefab to hold this script. And so I've created an empty game object, which I've called networking service. I've then attached the script to our object, after which we can make a prefab out of this object by dragging it into our project window. 
Then all you have to do is add this prefab to any scene in your project where you want to check the connectivity of the user's device. You'll then be able to call those methods and variables from any other script in that scene. And that's everything that we need to talk about regarding the networking service, but we're not done with this video yet as I'll also show you how to use the web view service. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to use the network service inside Unity. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and leave any questions you have in the comments below.